Hey everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, today I'm going to be making macarons, so I thought I would just record this so you guys can bake along with me. Um, I will go ahead and write down all the measurements out so you guys can screenshot that, uh, but feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch as, mu as much as you need to, um, and just come along. So first I'm going to start just by measuring out my ingredients. Um, so I have a scale, a food scale here. I just got this on Amazon for like 20 bucks. So I already have my stand mixer here. I'm going to go ahead and put my bowl here and set it up as tar. So I'm just going to reset the scale. Uh, and I'm going to start by putting in my egg whites. Uh, so these are fresh egg whites. I just went ahead and removed the yolks. Um, you also can use carton. I use both, um, but we will need just about 75 grams. I think I've already pre-weighed this, so it should be perfect. Yeah, so that's about 76. That's totally fine. And then I will just put this onto my mixer and get that ready. Uh, next thing I'm going to grab is just the granulated sugar. So I have some sugar here. And I'm going to go ahead and put that just in a cup because you will be adding that into your meringue as it starts to whip. Um, so I just want to put it into a nice easy cup to be able to pour it in properly. And go ahead, I'll just go ahead and reset this once again once I have my cup on here. I'll just use a measuring cup to add this in nicely. So 75 grams. I don't know what this would be in cups. Um, So sorry if you are going to do this in cups, I have no idea. Uh, egg whites is about two large eggs, um, and this I'm using about a third of a cup, maybe two of these a little less, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. Okay, so I have my sugar out here now, and, and then I'm going to start doing my almond flour and my icing sugar as well, but while I do that, I am going to go ahead and start my meringue, just so this can keep going while I'm doing other stuff. So I'm just going to use a whisk attachment here and I will go ahead and start beating that meringue. So I do do it at a little bit higher than stir just to start before um, and just to get it a little bit frothy and then I'll start slowly adding my sugar in. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay through this, uh, but while that is going, now I'm going to start my other dry ingredients. So here's my medium bowl. And once again, I'm going to reset that scale to tar, and I will go ahead and add 100 grams of almond flour. So this is just from Costco. This entire bag is about 18 bucks, and it has 1.36 kilograms. It lasts me forever. So very, very worth it, and it's really fine as well, so it's really, really good to use. There's a hundred. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add my icing sugar. My egg whites are still taking its time doing well, so I, I'm good here. Now I'm just going to reset this once again and I will start adding my icing sugar. And this is just 90 grams. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick whisk. Um, usually people sift the dry ingredients. Honestly, I don't. Uh, people say to sift it so that you don't get lumpy shells. I've never had lumpy shells using these two products, the, this almond flour and just regular icing sugar. Um, but you can definitely sift it if you find that it is a bit clumpy or lumpy at all. I'll just show you what this looks like. You can see here it's like really, really fine, really, really smooth. Uh, so for something like this, I probably won't need to sift it, so, and I never do, so I'm just not going to, um, but you can easily just use one of these, like, giant sifts and just, like, run it through uh, with the whisk as well. So, that's all I need. My scale form is going to have away. Some space. Okay, so now it is starting to get a little frothy. Uh, let me just pause this. What this looks like, just so you can get an idea. 
So it's starting to look a little frothy, you can see here. Um, this is when I would start adding in my sugar just really slowly. Just pop that back in. And I'll probably turn it up on a medium uh, speed. That's good. And then I'll just start slowly adding in my sugar. You can also do this with a hand mixer. I did that for like six months before I won this in a giveaway. Um, hand mixers are just fine. I would just go ahead and mix and add the sugar. Um, you just would use a slip, non-slip mat under, so it's a bit easier to navigate, um, but it's still totally possible. It just takes a bit of um, work, but you'll get there. It's fine. I keep adding my sugar and slowly. today I also will be making two different styles of my macarons. Uh, one just a basic color for any beginners, any starters, but I'll also be doing a marble effect using food coloring so we can get nice swirls on the macaron shells. So by now it will get really frothy, so it will start looking white, start looking opaque, um, so this is really good. So now you can see what it looks like. It's starting to get a bit thicker, um, but completely white, so. This is looking good, and we're just gonna keep beating this. I usually will also take a spatula and just scrape it down so that everything is getting nicely whipped and incorporated, especially since I've been turning the bowl a lot. There you go. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put this uh, quickly on high. Not the highest, but high enough. Um, and now I'll just take the time to prepare my baking bags. Um, so I just have these here from Wilton. Um, they're all just buy and toss. I got them from Michael's for 40% off for a bag of 100. And it's, I've just gone through the end of it now, so it lasts a really long time. You can also even use reusable bags as well. And you'll also just need some tall cups to prop up your bags. And some circle sticks. So you're going to see here, any size is fine. These are a little bit different, um, but if it's smaller, you can do the pipe a little bit longer, and that's the whole thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and trim the edge of my bag here. And then I'll just stick my pipe into the that into my bag. Uh, I stick the tip facing up because the batter is obviously really runny. Uh, so I just want to make sure to spill it out. And then I'll do the same with the other bag since I'm doing two different effects. Um, if I would just be doing one, I would just keep refilling one bag, but for this I'm going to use two. So making sure to check on my meringue. You really don't want to make sure you go past the stick peaks, otherwise you're overbeating your meringue. Uh, this is where macaron can get really tricky because uh, if you really mess up one little thing, it can go completely sideways, so just be really careful when you're washing your fingers. So it's been, I don't know how long I've worked this for now, however long I've been talking for. But I'll show you again what it looks like at this point. So it's still pretty soupy. You can see here, but it is getting thicker. So this is good. So we just still wanna keep mixing. 
At this point too, this is where I'd probably add my vanilla. So I'll also go ahead and do that so that that's nicely incorporated as well. These are vanilla shells. Um, if you did want to do like a chocolate shell, you can add cocoa powder. It will obviously make things brown, so just be aware of that when you're coloring. Um, so I'm just going to use this Lorraine natural vanilla bean paste. So I'm going for vanilla bean. I'm just going to add a little spoon of this. So little goes a long way with this stuff. This one has like the little bean, uh, the dots, the black dots, the vanilla bean you'll get in there. So nice flavor. Also for this bag, um, like I said before, I tipped it upwards for the other one. I'm going to keep this one upright because I am going to paint in some food coloring to get that marble effect. So I just want to keep it as straight as possible. So for this, I will just hang this one over. Also, if anyone's seen, I have a macaron globe that I got for my birthday or for Christmas, I think, from Sam and Simmit. So thank you guys. It was very cute. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep mixing in until I get more of a set feature. So for coloring, um, I usually start coloring during the meringue stage. You can add coloring after you mix in your dry ingredients, but it does worry me a bit because if you are really trying to incorporate the color, uh, you could tend to over mix it, which you don't want to do. Um, so it is easier to add it into your meringue in this stage. So I will be using the Performance Color Right System by Wilkins. Um, this also comes with a little booklet, which is awesome because it gives you like a full guideline of how many drops you need to use to achieve specific colors. So I love this. And it comes in like eight colors, so you can mix and match everything to achieve many, many different colors. So for this, I'm thinking of using or making like a nice pastel light purple. Um, and then for the marble one, I'll just go ahead and add some blue. So it'll be purple with some blue, and then I'll have some plain purple as well. Um, you can also add sprinkles as well if you want to do that to make it extra exciting, or you can just add sprinkles after. There's so much you can do with macros in terms of designing it, so yeah. Putting this up a little bit higher to get it going. I really hope you can hear me because this sounds really loud to me, but I hope the audio is okay. Um, I also have these Wilton icing colors. These are just the gel packs, so they look like this, these little containers. Um, I use the color right more because it gives you a lot more color options. These are not too bad. I've heard as well if you're coloring like buttercream with this brand, it does tend to get a little bit bitter. So. I stopped using these as much, but they are still available for you. Um, I'll probably use this to paint the marble coloring in the middle. So I'm going to check on this meringue. So notice here it is getting thicker. But it's still like very much not stiff just yet. If I like lift it up this way, it completely falls. Um, so we are not there yet. Um, it should take some time. It's totally fine. Just be a bit patient with it. Um, if it doesn't properly whip up, it is possible that there is some fat or oil that was stuck on your whisk or stuck in your bowl. Um, it is good to wipe everything down with vinegar. I've never had to do that. I just make sure everything's really clean um, after the dishwasher. Um, but just in case things don't lift or if things remain deflated, that could be a reason why. So just make sure that all of your stuff is completely clean before you start doing this. Really close. 
So I'm just going to keep a close eye on it. Again, we don't want to over whip our egg whites because that can cause some problems. Just looking at this here, give it a quick stir and see how this looks. So that is pretty good. Let's see one more time here. Another nice test that you can do to check if it is a stiff peak um, is flipping your bowl over your head. Obviously making sure it's actually not soupy and not going to fall out, but notice here like it's really, really stiff, okay? I mean, you don't have to go over your head obviously in case it actually spills, but just giving you a close up of how it looks super super thick this is definitely stiff now if i tilt it okay notice it is slipping a little bit um so i would go ahead and keep whisking that so once again i'm just going to scrape down my wool and bring it down to make sure that i am whipping everything and it's getting super super close so just keep an eye on it but it's almost up. I got these on Amazon, they come in two sheets for I think like less than 20 bucks, I think it's like $17, um, but it makes a huge difference in terms of like really flat, nice shelves. Um, this also overhangs a little bit, but that's really fine, I just don't type along the last one because I don't have perfect ones. It's good. So I have two sheets here ready to go. getting really really close here i think this might be it oh yeah so you can see how stiff that is right there so stiff okay i would not go anywhere than that probably could have checked a little sooner but i think this should be fine okay so i'm gonna give it one quick turn oh that just flung okay and i'll come over and show you guys again what this looks like Okay, so that's super stiff. Notice I'm keeping it on its side and it's still not moving like it did earlier. So that's like really, really stiff. So that's perfect. I totally said this is where I add the food coloring and I didn't. So I'm actually going to add it as we're mixing everything in. Again, I would add it when I'm doing the meringue part because again, you don't want to over whip or over fold anything. So that was totally my mistake. Um, so add it in during this stage, but you can also add in after. I just have to be a bit extra careful when I'm mixing everything up, um, but that's totally fine. Also, while I'm on this, uh, if you don't have these sheets, that's fine as well. You can use parchment paper. Um, I use parchment paper as well when I have some extra, but it doesn't bake as flat. So I don't love the look. These make them bake really, really nice and flat, perfect feet. Um, so I will make some extra on parchment to show you guys what that looks like. Um, but they are totally fine as well. If you wanted to use that. So this, I just have like a pizza, an extra like pizza tray here. I'm gonna use this. And I have these parchment rounds I use for my cake pans when I'm making circle cakes. Um, I'll just keep this flat on here. You definitely, if you are gonna use parchment, make sure it doesn't fold over because that tends to kink it and you want it to be as flat as possible. And we'll put that there. Okay, so now I can move this out of the way a little bit. And this is where we start the stage called macaronaging. Um, that's where we add our dry ingredients to our meringue. Um, so this is a stage where I am going to be very careful because I should have added the color first. And what am I going for? I'm going for a pastel purple. So I'm gonna do two pinks and one blue. So I will quickly just add this drop in. We're gonna do two pinks. Hopefully that turns out really nice. This also splattered. This also kind of stains a Lysol wipe, totally takes it off your counters. But this is gonna stain a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Okay, 
So that's in there now. I'm gonna add half of my dry ingredients first and give it a mix and then I'll add the second half afterwards. So there's half. Um, I'll come a bit closer if I can try and do this in front of the camera. Let's see here. So that's in, my coloring is just under here. This is where we go ahead and give it a quick mix. So for this stage, I'm like pretty aggressive with it just to get everything incorporated. Now the colors are nicely in here. Okay, and at that stage, I'd add my second half. So it's getting mixed. But to add the rest. And now we will mix the rest of this in here. Hopefully I can do this while holding the bottom of the bowl. Okay, so you wanna just keep folding I was aggressive at first, but now we want to start taking it a bit easier. Already I'm loving this color. Ooh, okay. So wrap and then like yeah. press down and like cut through your batter. So keep going here, but being very careful because once it gets to a certain state, you need to stop. Otherwise your macaron shells will just deflate and like go flat and spread. You want them to be propped up and nice. So we're gonna keep going here. Okay. You can see the consistency as it's dropping. It's still not quite there. You want a lava, lava situation. Not that we really know what lava looks like unless you Google that, but we do want to complete a figure eight with the batter. So we're getting close, we're getting there. You want it to start ribboning a bit without breaking. This is so hard to look at the camera and look at the, the batter at the same time. Okay. Okay, we're getting there. So notice how it's starting to like stay in one, one thing without breaking. I can't figure it properly with this angle. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, nice ribboning. I think we're good. So I'm going to stop there before I overdo this. So now we just wanna start adding it to our piping bags. So I'm gonna start with the one without the marbling. And okay, here's your bag. And you just wanna dump about half of this in here. If you can try and eyeball it. Okay, that's probably good. And then get your tray ready. I hope this is close enough that you can see how I'm piping. So just go ahead and fold over your bag and then just give it a nice twist. So you're holding your bag like this and giving it a twist. Just be careful because obviously it's going to start coming out. Now it's going to come a bit closer here. And we're just going to start piping. So you want to do circles. Um, don't force a circle, like right where you see the dots. Uh, you can also print templates if that helps as well. You just want to put it on the dot and squeeze and then it'll make its own circle. A perfect, perfect circle. So just be really careful. And then once you're done, just do a bit of a flick so that you can stop everything from coming out. So I will go down here, squeeze, and then I'll do a release like that. Okay. And also go straight up, don't go on an angle. Go straight completely, squeeze it, and then flick. And once you get the hang of it, it's super, super easy. I really hope you can see this. I should probably zoom in or something. I'll try and zoom in when I edit this so you can actually see how it goes. Squeeze and flick. When you're flicking, you're gonna stop squeezing. So you obviously you don't want more batter to come out. And just keep going until you're done all your circles. 
just keep squeezing as you uh, as you go as well keep pushing the batter down you don't want the batter to go like above where your hand is so just keep like grabbing the bag from the top and just pushing it down and squeezing just like that we're getting close to the bottom here Probably squeeze one more. This may be small. Okay, there we go. So there's the last one. Just give you a quick close up of how they look. Again, I'll try and zoom in that video so you can see. But notice they have like some height, so they're not completely deflated. They have some air here. Um, now we're just gonna go ahead and knock the air bubbles out before I do my second tray. Um, and this is just banging your trays against the counter. Trays a few times so that everything settles down. This pushes the air bubbles out as well so you don't get holes. And then once you see some air bubbles, you're just going to take a toothpick or anything sharp and just kind of run your toothpick through it. So I'll show you what the air bubbles look like. You can see here, can you see, oh, see there's like a few, just right there. So you just want to take like a toothpick and just quickly scribble this. And then get rid of them. Otherwise when they bake, they might actually show. And you don't want that to ruin your shells. So it's not too bad, I'm not seeing that many ear bubbles, so this is good. But just take your time and like scribble through these. You can even see some that you might have to pop. So if you see like any black dot of some sort, just like get your toothpick in there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I will put these aside now and start on my second tray. So for this one, we are again doing this marble technique. Uh, so for this one, just like I said, we have like a nice purple batter. So I want to add a blue here to make that marble effect. Um, you actually just need a paintbrush for this. Um, any clean paintbrush, any clean makeup brush will work totally fine. Um, so for this, I'm thinking of using the sky blue one. I think it'll contrast nicely with the purple. Um, you can actually just like use one of these, just use this color, but it's quite a blue color. So I'm going to use sky blue here. Fingers are going to be so blue. Okay. I'm just going to get some on my paintbrush. Just like that. Can you see that? And then at this point I'm just going to like run a straight line from the tip up as high as I can. So you don't have to add too much but just make sure you're making it like nice and even. Obviously like the base will get the most food coloring. So just make sure you spread it nice. Go as low as you can too because there is going to be batter that goes right at the front so your first few may not even have anything so try and go as far as you can. You can add as many stripes as you can um, as you want. I think I'll just do three. That'll be enough. I don't want to overpower and cover the purple completely gonna do three. Same thing. Oh, I'm like so shaky doing this. Okay. I've done this effect in forever. I hope this food coloring is still good. I haven't used this food coloring in a while either. So hopefully this effect still works really well. bit more. Okay. okay. With something like this, you just have to like hope for the best. You're not going to know exactly how this is going to look. So I'll show you what the bag looks like. So now we've added three different stripes here. 
and we're gonna see how this looks once we pipe. So once again, I'm just gonna add, put my bag in a cup, and I'll add the rest of this batter here. So much on my spatula, I'm just gonna scrape and get everything that I can here. Okay. <coughs> away. Now we can go ahead and start with these ones. So same technique again. Give a nice twist at the top. You can see how pretty this looks now. And now we will start piping once again. There's nothing showing on the first one. Okay, now it's starting to show. So. Okay, lots of blue. Maybe too much. Let's see if this dies down a bit. Same thing, right? Just squeezing on the dot. Don't move, just squeeze. And then once your size is good, just give it a quick flick and let go of the pressure. Again, it takes some practice, but it's totally fine. Just be patient. So I was gonna do a parchment one, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna have extra. Otherwise I'd show you what that look like, looks like. Um, but again, it's just not gonna be as flat, which is fine. Um, but these are definitely worth the investment. These silicone mats, um, if you plan to make macarons all the time, or even just everyday cooking, we use these all the time when we bake. Okay, I had a few spots. I think I have one left out of here. So I'm just gonna squeeze that onto this last one. Oh my gosh, maybe not even. Oof. Okay, that's a force. That is probably not going to be nice, but it's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. Just put it in your trays. And you flip the oven. And then once again, we're just going to catch any air bubbles that came through. Otherwise, these actually look really good. I'll come up and show you guys what this one looks like. So you can see these nice marble effect. This is our first one. So this is why you want to go as low as you can when you are adding the food coloring in the bag. Otherwise, the first one will probably not show anything. Uh, but notice the second one's getting better. And then here's where it becomes really, really strong. And then by the end, it also dies down just a little. Okay, I have to stop tilting this. Otherwise... They are going to be lopsided. Just want to make sure it's all good. And that's it. So now is the resting stage. Uh, so people usually rest for maybe like at least 30 minutes, sometimes longer. Um, during the winter time when it's not as humid, you can let them rest for less, um, but you may need to rest them for longer. Uh, it's totally fine here, honestly. I usually like to let them rest for at least an hour um, so that I can see a film showing up on the shelves meaning you can touch it and nothing's gonna come off on your fingers. Um, so I'll go ahead and pause this and start cleaning up and I'll be back in about an hour to check on these. Okay, so I'm back. It's been about an hour now. I've checked on them already and I've done the touch test and they are looking good. Um, so obviously just making sure it's clean fingers. Uh, you're just gonna rub your finger along the top of them and just making sure that nothing's coming off and you actually feel the shell, so. 
come over and show you guys really quickly here if I just touch this one. I'm like completely touching it and I can feel the shell and it is dry. So for ones with food coloring on top, because there's like some water on it, some like liquid, um, it may take a bit longer to um, set. So just making sure as well, these ones are good. My fingers are actually blue from before, so I'm just gonna make sure even this isn't coming off. And they look good to me. So, now that these are good, I've just gone ahead and preheated my oven. Uh, it is going to be set at 285 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and we are gonna pop these in for about 18 to 20 minutes, usually 20 minutes for me personally. So my oven's been preheated and ready to go. So I'm just gonna add my first tray in. I'm gonna insert the one that was first piped because you wanna do it in the order that you pipe them in. You put it in for about 18 to 20 minutes. I've set a timer for 18 just so I can check on them and then I'll probably leave them for the full 20. Uh, while that's going as well, I do wanna start preparing my frosting. Um, so I do have some buttercream that I just defrosted. I had this in the freezer, so it's all thawed and ready to go now. Um, I'm just going to get my piping bag. So I use the same one that I piped the macarons with. I just ran it under hot water and then it gets it out really nicely. I just want to make sure that it is clean and dry. So I'm just going to run a paper towel in here to make sure it's completely dry. Because um, if there are some drops of water that come out with your buttercream, it's not going to mix with this, obviously. It's just going to kind of splatter a little bit making sure it's nice and clean and dry. And I'll insert this circle tip once again. Um, you can use a, a flower tip or any star tip to any, do specific designs if you want, but it's really up to you. And then for my buttercream, um, what's easy that I find when it's in a plastic bag like this, I'll actually just cut the top of this and insert the whole thing in. So I'm just gonna make a bit of space by pushing it down. And I'll fold it and I'll just cut the whole side. Now I can just pop this right in and I'll just make sure to squeeze from the top and you'll see here it's starting to like push out into the piping bag itself. So this is just a vanilla bean buttercream. Uh, so super basic, you can fill it with whatever, whatever you'd like. Um, you can do an outline of this and fill it with like a lemon curd or a fruit curd of some sort, some kind of filling. Um, you can do dolce, you could do caramel, um, any kind of filling or buttercream you want. So this is ready to go, uh, pretty premature because these still need to cool completely before you do pipe them in, um, but I'm ready to go with this. So I will let this go and then I'll add my second tray and I'll come back whenever they're ready. So now my 18 minute timer has already gone off. So I went to go check on the macarons. I don't wanna open the oven any way through to check on them, um, cause if the air comes out, it messes up with the temperature. So just don't open your oven the entire time. Uh, just use the oven light to see how they are. At this point, I just check if there's any cracks or making sure things are good to go. Um, I put it on for another two minutes just to finish up the 20 full minutes of baking and it is just about done now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these out. I'll just put them right on the counter and just turn my fan on just to let them cool and then I'll go ahead and put in my second tray now as well. And we'll set the timer again for the 18 minutes. Just going to show you quickly how they look. Come up over here. You can see really nice feet. Uh, nothing's cracked at all, so that's really good. I have had bad situations where the shell would just completely crack. Um, that probably means you didn't rest long enough, or if it's the humidity. Um, I had a lot of cracks in the summertime, um, but since we really let uh, them rest to give that nice film on the top, um, they did rise really nicely with no cracks at all. And notice you can see the feet there. Um, the feet are just what is right below the, the top shell, so it looks really, really nice. 
So I will let these cool completely, at least like about a half hour until they're cool to the touch. And then we can go ahead and just easily pop them off. So let those cool, I'll let my second batch go and I will come back after they are nicely cooled. Okay, so my second batch is now done. I just popped them out of the oven. So I'll show you guys what these look like now. They turned out great. So again, no cracks, no lopsided ones. Usually a few turn lopsided near the edges, but this is good. Everything looks really good. You can see the feet there. The color turned out really, really nice, the marbling. So now I'll just let these ones cool. Uh, so it's been 20 minutes since these have been in. So I actually checked my other ones and the pan is completely cold as well. So I can show you guys what these look like too. So it's only been 20, but they've quite cooled down now. You can see here I popped these two already, but you can see. They just stick right off. You can see how flat and nice these bake. You can kind of hear those like pop right off there. Same thing. There you go. So again, just making sure it is like really cooled. I can completely touch everything. Uh, if it is too warm, you may get them sticking to the sheet. So just be really careful, be really patient. But yeah, look at those. The feet look really, really nice. They've rised nicely, rose rised. And I'll just pop all of these off. Like that. Cool. So at this point, I'm pretty happy. Um, I don't have to wait any longer. I kind of just go ahead and start pairing them up based on the shapes. Obviously, you can't get everything completely perfect. Um, that's a little bit off here. So that looks really good. So these two pair really nicely. Let's see here. His feet. So this tells me when there's like a little bit of a nip here. Um, you could have, I could have macronage just a little bit more, just folded my batter a bit more. Um, just meaning it didn't really settle as much, even with um, the pan dropping and everything. So that's okay though. You can see these match really, really nicely feet look really really good too as of now i can't really tell if they're hollow or, or not um i tend to still have a few hollows something that i'm still working on um, but when you do let these mature overnight um they should start be, like become better and um, that's when they become chewy and they get the texture that you want as a macaron but at this point i just go ahead and pair all of the ones up just making sure the sizes are good and then I would start filling these afterwards. Um, just again, once you fill them up, you're just gonna put them in a container and put them, I usually put them just in the freezer and let them sit uh, for 24 hours at least. And then I'll bring them out to room temperature and then that's when the texture is really good. You'll have a crunchy outside, a really, really chewy soft inside, and that's exactly what you want. So I would go ahead and try them now as well once I fill them. Um, they still taste really good even now, but it, they do taste better tomorrow, so. It's a nice waiting game when it comes to macarons. Okay, cool. So these are sorted and these look really good. I'm gonna wait for the last batch to finally cool before I pipe them all together at once. So I'll show you when we get to that stage in just about 20 minutes. So now my second batch has completely cooled. So once again, you can see, popped a few off already, but these just pop right off the sheets. You can hear that, just a little bit of stickiness, then it just pops off. So these are great. Also really nice feet as well, super, super flat. So these baked out, really nice. I had paired these up, but I actually decided I'm gonna do one top marble and then the bottom just plain. So I can flip it around if I want to. Um, so I will just go ahead and sort these out. You can see this will be really nice. Marble top, plain bottom, plain top, marble bottom, whatever. So I will just do this really quickly and then we will go ahead and fill the rest. Okay, so 
So now I've organized them just mixing a marble and a plane. Um, I've also set them up and lined them up really nice so it'll be very, very easy and quick to fill. Uh, this entire batch made about 22 macarons, so just for reference. Um, and just to fill them, this is super easy as well. I'm just going to take one of the bottoms here, pipe straight. I'm just going to do a nice squeeze. As you can see, it's a nice little dollop. And then I can go ahead and just press this on. So for these, you don't want to push too hard. You don't want it to crush. Uh, just give it a quick twist. And then there it is, just filled. Usually I pipe just a bunch and then I'll go ahead and top them all off. Um, but just again, you do want to do one squeeze in the middle and just let that spread. And then you can just go ahead and top it off again, just lightly twisting it just like that. There you go. If you have other fillings, you can do like a, a quick like circle, just like that, instead of squeezing and letting it go. Um, and you can make just like a circle and then pipe inside with the filling, uh, whatever works best for you. If you are using a star tip or a flower tip or anything like that, I would probably just do a nice piping design because if you just squeeze, it's not really gonna make the nice effect. I'll just pipe a few here. And then I'll just pop the tops on them. Just like that. It's good. And then once you're done, um, I always put it into a, an airtight container. So I have a, a one here that just snaps the lids close. I'll just put a paper towel at the bottom here and then I'll just go ahead and stack all of my filled macarons. And then I'll close them up and put them straight into the freezer and let them mature overnight for 24 hours. And then I'll bring them out to room temperature for about 30 minutes and then I'll go ahead and try them. And that's when I said the consistency will be really nice. Uh, it'll be nice. Nice crunchy, but also really chewy inside. So I'm gonna keep filling these up and I will be right back. So now I just got finished uh, filling up all my macarons and I tuck them into my container. Um, I did run out of buttercream, so I am just gonna leave some shells just in here. That's totally fine. Uh, if you did wanna fill them up after as well, or if you wanted to put different buttercream later on, um, you can just again, thaw them out and then add the buttercream afterwards. I'll quickly show you what one looks like. This is just like the mini one that didn't turn out very nice. Didn't match with anything. Um, but if I take a bite, you're gonna notice it's like really, really crunchy, like cookie like. Oh, it's actually really soft. <laughs> so you can see here, it's a bit hollow. So hollow just meaning there's like complete air in there. Um, the texture is still really, really nice. Still crunchy, but still really, really chewy. Um, as it does mature in the 24 hours, um, it will fill up a bit more as well. So don't worry about that. But even if they are hollow, they honestly taste amazing no matter what. So I'm actually going to finish that. But I will just pop these in the freezer and put them in for 24 hours and then we will enjoy them tomorrow. So I actually decided to eat one more kind of awkward shell. This is the one that had the marble but didn't quite make it out. So again... Okay, much crunchier. And you can see the inside, just chewy and soft. It's getting really crumbly and getting everywhere. But yeah, still so, so good, even fresh the day of, but it will be better tomorrow. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for joining me on this first bake along. Um, we'll probably do another one again next week. So hopefully I'll catch you then. Bye.